Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our Market Outlook, fourth quarter 2020, titled On Demand. First, a review of our past calls. At the start of the year, we presented new wine, new skin. We said the world has changed. We are now in a new digital economy. And a significant portion of the equity market is under technological disruption. Therefore, our approach to portfolio must take on a new strategy by the innovators, by the disruptors, not the disrupted. At the start of quarter two, in the eye of the pandemic storm, we said the Federal Reserve has drawn a line on the sand for risk assets of equities and corporate bonds when they came out with the QE, infinity policy, in which they said they will buy whatever amount of US treasuries, including investment grade and fallen angel high yield bonds. We said it was time to deploy cash into portfolios that can last. The markets found the floor and rallied strongly in quarter two. At the start of quarter three, we said the barbell portfolio construct has demonstrated resilience, resilience in the storm. Stay engaged with the markets through the barbell strategy. Now, at the start of quarter four, we continue to advocate that you are engaged with the market. The world is on demand. Why on demand? So if you look at mobility data from the likes of Apple and Google, as seen from the chart on your left, the human traffic is gradually normalizing to pre-pandemic levels. Hence, we do expect consumption spending to resume. Now, the chart on your right suggests that the number of new infections in this second wave is actually even higher than the first wave. Thankfully, mortality rates have stayed subdued. Hence, we do not see a high likelihood of another blanket lockdown. Together with fiscal spending boosts from governments across the world, as well as from very easy monetary policy, zero interest rates, we think the recovery, the economic recovery, is in sight, albeit on a gradual basis. So many clients have challenged our view from the start of this year. Why do you remain constructive on equities, on risk assets, when the market is at all-time high and the pandemic is still with us? Why isn't the stock market going to crash? We believe there are three market dynamics at work. Firstly, liquidity. QE Infinity has created excess liquidity, as you can see from the chart on your left. And there is a high correlation between stock market, the S&P 500, and M2 money supply. Stock markets thrive on liquidity. So the recent surge in liquidity because of QE Infinity has led to the markets rallying and well-supported. So if you look at the chart on your right, the ratio between the S&P index over M2 or liquidity does not suggest a crash is round the corner. Now, the second dynamic is called FOMO, fear of missing out. The institutional investor, the pension funds, the insurance companies, endowment funds, Sovereign wealth funds have missed out completely on this 
50 to 60% recovery from the lows in March. So you can see from the chart, they are now sitting on four to five trillion dollars of cash and they are going to play catch up as the markets remain supported. Unlike past cycles, this time around, the individual or the retail investor in fact caught the move and they went in big when the market was sell, sold down. But really the bulk of liquidity or the bulk of cash is held in the hands of institutions. We therefore think that whenever there is a market dip, it will be a shallow and well-supported dip because of the abundance of cash on the sidelines. Now, the third market dynamic is what we call TINA. There is no alternative. So if you look at the world today, there are only three asset classes that can really absorb the pool of global savings. Cash deposits, the bond market, as well as the equity market. Now, if the cash deposit is at zero interest rate all over the world, the bond market not much better, as you can see from this slide. 20% of the bond market today is negative yielding. Less than 5% yields you 4% or more. Most of the bond market, 80% of it, is yielding between 0 to 4%. So really, not much better in terms of the yield. Therefore, we think the equity market and corporate bonds will be beneficiaries of this third market dynamic called there is no alternative. So we therefore advocate and reaffirm our barbell strategy in this new world amid ultra-low interest rate environment. What is barbell? To recollect, barbell to us is to have outsized positions in two areas of focus in your portfolio. One, growth boosters, the other income generators. Now, a big, a significant portion of the world, world equity capitalization is under siege. For example, e-commerce on brick and mortar retail companies. So we avoid the brick and mortar retail. Oil and gas companies, under siege from the preference towards cleaner energy. Telecommunications, the business model of telecom companies are challenged by FaceTime, by Skype, by Netflix, by Zoom, as well as other over-the-top streaming services. Banks too are under siege from fintech companies, online payment platforms as well as from very low interest rates. So the barbell portfolio construct invests into disruptors, innovators, not the disrupted. Now, the efficacy of the barbell strategy is reflected in its performance. On a year-to-date basis, for the first three quarters, it has returned some 9% outperforming the underlying benchmark of 50% global equity, 50% global bonds by 500 basis points. Now, let's uh, focus on the growth boosters side of the barbell construct. Now, the biggest trend that's taking place today is the world becoming a digital economy. Long-term, irreversible, secular growth trend. So you want to buy into companies like cloud services, 5G, e-commerce. You want to buy also into semiconductors, the brains that power the digital economy. There is also other long-term trends out there. The world population that's aging, growing, older, living longer, so buy into healthcare. And of course, the millennials' consumption trend especially coming out from China. So buy into esports, e-gaming, athleisure, athletic leisure. Companies like Nike, Adidas, Lululemon are good examples of that. 
Now, for the fourth quarter market outlook, we have included another growth booster. We call them vaccine winners. Okay, let's start with technology. Why technology? Because technology operates in a borderless world. It spans across geographies. Now, today, if you are able to develop a software that addresses certain deficiencies in the existing business processes, or if you are able to develop a mobile app that is innovative, that is interactive, that is fun, easy to use, guess what? Your total addressable market is the world almost on an overnight basis. You do not need to spend on capex, huge capex, to build physical infrastructure in every part of the world. That's the power of technology. This is best exemplified in Zoom. As you can see from the chart, it started the year with 10 million users. Within one quarter, 300 million users. Amazing. And there are only three apps ever achieved this. Can you venture a guess who they are? In 2016, remember Pokemon Go? That was one of the apps that garnered 300 million downloads in one single quarter. What is the other app? It has to be the ubiquitous TikTok. Early this year, 300 million downloads in one quarter. Zoom also scored very well in ESG, the S aspect, the social aspect. And you know ESG is becoming a very important consideration in the investment decision-making of institutional investors. As you can see from here, 90,000 schools in 20 countries use Zoom to teach remotely. Truly powerful, the technology sector. Now, the other growth booster has to be China, China equities. Why? Because of the massive pool of savings from many decades of high growth. Now, the byproduct of the increasing US-China trade tension is the relisting of China companies from New York to Shanghai and Hong Kong, the likes of Alibaba, NetEase, JD.com. These have helped to increase the breadth and the depth of the Chinese market. And it has only got to be positive for the market because it would allow these companies to tap on the massive domestic savings in China. Look at the chart, the IPO pipeline, pipeline in Hong Kong. Guess what? This is just the beginning. Now, let me talk about this next growth booster. And we call them the vaccine winners. Pandemic victims becoming vaccine winners. Restaurants, integrated resorts, hotels, fell very sharply during this pandemic. It is trading now at two standard deviations from the mean. We believe with the discovery of a vaccine, which is around the corner, as well as the distribution of the vaccine all across the world, these stocks will mean revert. So a great opportunity, and we are positioned for that. What about airlines? Haven't they fallen more? Yes, a lot more. If you look at this chart, they have fallen four standard deviations away from the mean. So then, are they going to recover fast and furious post the discovery of the vaccine? Well, it will recover, but we think the timeline for it to mean revert will be a little bit longer. Why? Because the revenue model of airlines is very much 
concentrated on business travel through the sale of business class seats as well as through loyalty mileage programs. So it will take a while because after all, business executives today are <laughs> comfortable and very well accustomed to online meetings like what I am doing now with you through WebEx, Microsoft Teams, through Zoom. So we are not, yet, we are not there yet in terms of uh, positioning for the airlines. The recovery will take a while longer. Let me now move to the other end of the barbell portfolio, the income generators. We continue to like hybrid securities. These are tier one, tier two capital instruments issued by banks primarily, European banks. We like the bond market in the double B, triple B credit space, in particular Asian and European upper tier high yield bonds. And then, of course, REITs. REITs has been our favourite. So if you look at the REIT market, and Singapore is the largest REIT market uh, in Asia x Japan, we had a great run. The pandemic hit, after which there is one bright spot in the REIT market. We call them the logistics and data centres. They recovered all the losses of the pandemic, and they are now trading at all-time highs, outperforming the other subsectors of the REIT market. We think this is a great proxy income play for technology. And at 4% yield today, it is a great income generator in the barber portfolio. Why? because of the rapid pace of digitalization in ASEAN, Southeast Asia. It's spurring the expansion of cloud infrastructure footprint. Singapore is a big beneficiary of that because of the ease of doing business in Singapore, as well as the high-speed connectivity. Bike Dance, the parent of TikTok, and Tencent recently announced plans to build data centers here in Singapore, following Alibaba, Amazon, and Google. So the demand for data centers will continue to be strong. We continue to like data center logistic REITs. Now, let me touch upon commercial REITs, Singapore and Hong Kong commercial REITs, in particular shopping malls. There are a lot of reservations about this subsector because e-commerce is going to impact the footfall in malls, pressurizing rentals. But they have already corrected some 25% in price. And we think at a yield of 5% today, they are attractive. Unlike Shopping malls in US, Australia, or rather unlike housing in US and Australia, Singapore and Hong Kong houses are very small. Okay, Singapore average uh, unit size, 900 square feet, Hong Kong 400 square feet. So the affinity to linger around in malls will continue. And the malls themselves are shifting their tenant mix, more recreational, more lifestyle, more food and beverage. Therefore, we think the rentals are sustainable. At 5% dividend yield, they are again an attractive asset to hold as an income generator in the barbell portfolio. Let me now talk about risk diversifiers. It's important to have this asset class because it is less correlated to equities and bonds. And therefore, if you include them, it creates overall resilience to the portfolio. Now, our favorite risk diversifier asset class is gold. It's not just a risk diversifier. It is enjoying strong tailwinds from ultra-low interest rates. So we do have a pricing model and uh, 
if you look at the inputs into the pricing model, the level of the dollar, the direction of the dollar, level of interest rates, and the direction of interest rates, it does suggest that the target price for gold is about 10 15% higher from where it is today. However, we are cognizant that we are living in unprecedented times. And this model, this pricing model, could not incorporate QE. Because QE or money printing had never happened in the past. And QE is reflected in the size of the balance sheet. So therefore, as the Fed has guided, we think QE will continue to be very, very strong a policy tool. And therefore, we are not surprised if the gold price overshoots our own target. Why sky is the limit for gold? Well, today gold is at 2,000. It goes to three, it may go to five, even 10. Why the sky is the limit? Because unlike agricultural commodities, industrial metals, or even property prices, the level of gold price has no impact whatsoever on inflation, on consumer price inflation, on the masses, the mass population. So governments and central banks will not intervene to stem its rise. The sky's the limit. Now, the legendary investor Warren Buffett, who is forever opposed to buying gold. In fact, you know, he said this in one of his speeches. Gold gets dug out of the ground in Africa or someplace. Then we melt it down, dig another hole, bury it again, and pay people to stand around guarding it. It has no utility. Anyone watching from Mars would be scratching their head. Guess what? At the age of 90, after 70, 70 years of, of uh, uh, managing portfolios and doing so, so well, he made a U-turn. This year, he bought the second largest gold mining company, Barrick Gold. He put in about half a billion dollars. So let me now talk about some of the near-term risks. And the near-term risk has to be the US election. Who is going to win, Biden or Trump? It's down to the wire. So the uncertainty about who is going to win, who is going to be in the White House, and will the result of the election be contested, these will add to near-term uncertainties and volatility. Also, the question is, if Democrats win the White House and the Senate, corporate taxes will rise. And normally, that is negative for equities. But our analysis of the past suggests that there is little correlation medium term forward. So if you look at it six months forward, there is no correlation. A Democratic Party leading the White House has no impact negative impact on the stock market. In fact, in the past, stock market did better when we had a democratic president. So this is how we would advocate for you to construct your portfolio for a balanced risk investor with a long-term time horizon. 50% in equities, and because of our barbell strategy, uh, buying into innovators, technology companies, as well as income-generating assets, we end up with 28% in U.S. equities and the rest Asian equities. Very few exposure into Europe and Japan. We would have about 30% in bonds. We like EM, primarily Asian bonds. Gold, between gold, physical gold and uh, gold mining, we would have 8%. Non-market directional Strategies like hedge funds, we would have 5% and the remaining 6% in cash. So in summary, the world is on demand. Recovery is in sight, albeit gradual. Stay engaged with risk assets through a barbell portfolio construct. 
This strategy, which we introduced two years ago, has done well, and we believe will continue to do well in this new world. We have included vaccine winners to the list of our growth boosters. And on the income-generating part for bonds, we favour upper-tier high yield in Asia and Europe corporate bonds. Thank you so much for your attention.